Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how we can use decision trees when we have continuous variables. So imagine this case, we have our training case and the variable income has continuous values. How we can use it to run the decision tree algorithm? What we usually do is we find split points. It means to find a location in our variable and then we transform the variable into a binary one where we replace every value depending on if it is greater or smaller than the split point. In this example, if we choose 15 as our split point, then every single value will be transformed into greater than 15 or lower than equal than 15. So in the tree construction process, we are going to have two edges as we had in the previous examples. So how we find the right split point, because it could be 15, 2, 33, whatever, right? So what we usually do is to try three options. One option is to check every single possible split point among a set of values within a grid that start with a minimum like zero, then to a maximum like a hundred and a step like one, for example. The main issue with this approach is that it could be too slow if we try too many values. So every time we try one value, what we do is like we split the data and we measure the information gain of that node. So we should choose the best split point as the one that reaches the highest information gain for that specific node. Another alternative is instead of having a, a grid, we just try every possible value we have in our training set. So we choose every number of our potential splits and we evaluate the information gain of that split after we binarize that variable. So in this case, for example, we will try 30.5 as, as a split point, 20.7 and so on. The third option and it's in general the most suitable in practice, is that we choose a random selection of points from our training cases, and we try just that selection as candidates. So for example, if we said that we are going to choose just three cases, we randomly select three numbers, for example, 30.5, 27.3, and 60.9, and we binarize the variable three times and try each case by calculating the information gain of the node income for each of these split points. And we stick to the split point that generates the highest information gain. So what happens we do when we do this transformation? Are we wasting so much information? Well, in general, we should keep in mind that what we want to do with a decision tree is just to to achieve a good performance in, in classification. We don't care about the detail of the values in our data. So given that we choose the split point that maximizes the information gain of the, of the node, we can end up with a tree that has just a bunch of binary splits and still is performing very well for, for classification. As you can see in this image, what we do when we create split points, we literally split each of our axes with straight lines depending on the location of the data points. So when we choose the best, the best split points, what we are doing is like we are keeping points of different classes in different hypercubes of our feature space or variables space. So as far as our training cases can be divided with smaller squares or hypercubes, then the decision tree is going to perform well. We don't need to keep the detailed values of those training cases. So this is why using binary splits is a very common practice. So this is just an example of how a decision tree will look when it's being built by using just split points we can see that one variable may be split into one specific area. Like for example, the variable A can be first split in, this, in the number 10, 
But then when we go to the left side, in cases when that variable is lower or equal than 10, again, below this part, we could keep splitting the variable A into smaller and smaller ranges that will be contained in the left side of the split number five. 